Hey there, Jacob Rhodes. And what I want to cover in this video is how to update your saw adapter plate or retrofit your saw adapter plate with the notch and the bolt pattern to accept the dust collection nozzle. That way you can add dust collection to your track saw kit. So what we're going to do is basically go through, uh, we'll take off the zero clearance block or the anti-chip carrier that you have on the base of your saw. So go ahead and take this piece off. Um, that's pretty much exactly where the notch is going to go for the dust collection nozzle. Other than that, you don't have to take the base plate off of your saw. Uh, all you've got to do is lift it all the way up and make sure your saw guard is out of the way. We're only going to go halfway through the base plate. So it's a quarter inch deep. The base plate itself is a half an inch thick. So that gives you plenty of leeway there. You're not going to run into the base of your saw. Just make sure your blade's up out of the way. Tape your guard up if you need to. But that's pretty much what we're going to do. The easiest way to do this is with a router table. You can do it a couple other ways. None of them are going to be that safe. None of them are going to be that easy. As long as you got a router table with a fence you can index, it's going to make it a breeze. First thing you want to do is just kiss your bit, zero it out, move it back two and five sixteenths of an inch, and that's going to give you the first pass. And that way your dust collector is going to be located properly. I'm using a quarter inch diameter router bit. You can use a half inch bit, three quarter inch bit, whatever you want to use. Um, that's just the one I happen to grab out of the index. As far as other tools, you're going to need a quarter inch drill bit. So quarter inch drill bit gives you a quarter inch hole, hopefully. And that's exactly what the little brass inserts here need to fit into. So we'll go through, we'll set the router table up here real quick. We'll do our first pass. We'll index it back. The dust collector is two and a half inches wide, plus or minus 10 thou. So there's a little bit of wiggle room there. The reason that your instructions that come with the kit have two and a half plus for the width of this, cut it to two and a half inches. If it fits, sweet. If you need to, move your table just a little bit more, do another relief pass, and then this will fit really well. So it's two and a half inches wide, plus or minus a little bit, but your woodworking tools aren't going to be, you know, they don't have thousandths of an inch marked out. It's all sixty-fourths, uh, which is 15.7 thou, if you've ever wondered. Uh, other than that, I'll get this all set up. I'll move the camera over, move the light over. Unfortunately, this is the darkest part of our shop. Uh, the only thing we really use a router table for is to do a 45 degree chamfer around the edges of all the saw plates and the rest of the plastic parts. So let me get the camera moved, let me get the light moved over, and we will get to it. All right, so for the sake of brevity, I've already zeroed out the router bit, both on the height and the fence here. Uh, you want to make sure your router bit is up a quarter of an inch. You only want to go halfway through the plate here. plate is half an inch thick. So again, lift your router bit to a quarter of an inch. And kiss the side of the bit and then move your fence system back two and five sixteenths and that's going to give you the first, first pass here. Uh, and then simply lift your saw up, make sure your saw guard is up out of the way. You can tape it there if you need to. Um, I'm actually just going to hold it with one hand. And, uh, you know, we're basically just going to go through and we're going to cut a notch between here and here, roughly. And we're just going to go from there. Um, if your saw base overhangs past the front of your, your saw plate, uh, you can actually take a piece of scrap lumber and just make a little spacer block. Um, you know, this one would be a half of an inch. And just drop it in here, butt it up against there, and adjust your fence as needed to compensate for that. And then just move it all as one unit uh, or string it across the whole way. Kind of depends on what you want to do. But that's a way to get around that because I know some of the saws, the base plate is actually underneath the metal base here in the front. But uh, I've already got my fence set down, got the router bit set to the right height. Let me grab my earplugs here and throw them on, and then we will go through with the first cut. Okay, so there's our first notch. 
that again is two and five sixteenths of an inch away from the front edge. I'm going to increment the table down. I'm actually going to do the last pass down here first and then I'll just go back through and adjust the table as needed or the fence as needed to uh, clean up everything between those. But again, we're going to go two and a half inches minus the bit diameter. So quarter inch bit, we're going to go two and a quarter. So I'm going to pick another nice even number over here on my measuring tape, adjust that. And we're going to roll back two and one half inches. And then we're going to take out the quarter inch diameter of the router bit. And should be golden. And again, we'll throw it up here. And we will do our next pass. Okay, so there's your first and your last. Just as a reference, we can hold this up here and we see that it's going to be about the right size. And it's pretty forgiving. I mean, it doesn't have to be exact. That's what the uh, bolt flanges are for. But again, I'll go through here. I'll knock out the rest of this here and uh, we'll get this notch cleaned out. And then we'll go over, I'll reset the camera and we'll look at, be looking to the bottom of it. And we'll look about how to do the bolt flanges and make sure everything's in the right spot. All right, so here we've got our saw. We've got the little notch over here on the side that we've cut. I went ahead and I dropped the blade down just a little bit, um, so it's just barely below the bottom of the plate there. And the only reason that I did that was so that whenever I put the uh, dust collection nozzle into the little slot that we had cut, it has the ability to kind of fit right between the teeth. Um, that way, it's this is really the easiest way to set it up. Um, because if you go in too far, then the nub is going to stick past the blade there and that's going to hit on the anti-chip strip and it's going to cause your saw to kind of rock up, kind of weird. So what we really want to do is bring this over, try to maintain a good camera angle with the light, and we want to split the blade. So you don't want to come all the way over here because then you're really not going to get any of the zero clearance you know, effectiveness, but you don't want to go too far. So the easiest thing to do is just kind of look down the blade itself and use that as your reference. And you want to go kind of dead center. You know, So you have one tooth that goes this way and one tooth that goes this way. You just want to put it right in the middle. And uh, once you get it where you want it, you just take a C-clamp or a spring clamp Clamp it right in the middle. That way everything kind of stays where you want it to. Give it a quick double check. And then you're ready to drill your holes. So, like I said earlier, you need a quarter inch diameter bit for the, in, the, uh, the inserts. The holes on the bolt flanges are just over 3 sixteenths. It's actually a metric one. But if you have a 3 sixteenths drill, you can drill right through these. It's always a good idea to double check, make sure nothing really moved. Yeah, we should be good. So you're going to drill through the metal, the uh, the plastic base plate, but you don't have to drill through the metal base plate of your saw, because all we're doing is putting the inserts in, and they just there's just a small press fit. So here we've got our two holes there and there. There we go. You actually see it in light now. So we've got our two holes there. Um, the inserts look like this, get it to focus there. And the bottom side of them are shiny and smooth and the top side has knurls. So the shiny smooth part goes in first 
Uh, actually, I need to drill these out to the right size now that we have a pilot hole. So, first, drill them out to a quarter of an inch. Okay, so there's our two quarter inch holes. And we drop our insert in there. And the easiest way to do this is with a pair of channel locks or if you've got a C-clamp handy, they can be press fit in with that as well. But again, we just press fit our little inserts in here and that is going to give you the threads you need to attach your dust collector and your zero clearance block. The, uh, the new ZCBs, if you get one of those, they actually have two different bolt patterns on them. One of them is going to match the old anti-chip carrier, so it's a bolt-on replacement for those. And it's also going to have the bolt pattern for these here. Okay, so there's that. The easiest thing to do is actually start your bolts because the threads will be slightly collapsed because we just pressed them in there. So start your bolts. Run those down through there before you put the dust collector on. It's going to spread the inserts back out. Makes it a little bit easier to get them started whenever you got the dust collector holding there. So we'll just go through and put our little dust collector back on here. But again, that's pretty much all there is to setting up your dust collector. You go through, you mill out your notch. Again, it's a quarter of an inch deep. Two and a half inches wide, plus a little bit if you need to have the dust collector fit really nicely. And then as far as setting up the depth of your dust collector over to your blade, easiest thing is just drop it in there. Drop your blade down just a little bit so that it can fit in there snugly. And then space it halfway across your blade. And then drill out your holes for your inserts. Drop your inserts in, or I should say press them in, they don't really drop in. And then install your dust collector. And then once you get this bolted onto the bottom of your plate, all you've got to do is go through and do your plunge trim just like you did on the zero clearance block or the anti-chip carrier in the beginning. And that's going to set it to your saw and your plate. Okay, so there is a separate video on that if you need that. But this one just covers how to adapt your saw. Okay. If you guys got any questions, feel free, let me know and we will get you taken care of. But that's pretty much it for how to retrofit a dust collector to an existing saw adapter plate. All right. So there we go. There's your finished product. Have a good one guys.